Hey guys, there's a lot that's been uh, discussed about the Titan submersible that's been missing now um, up over the Titanic wreck site. And I thought we might take the opportunity to maybe kind of throw out uh, the logistics, the problems that are foreseeable with the uh, the group that's up there now working. Now we've we've heard that they they've been hearing some some noises which they're thinking are coming from uh, the Titan submersible so they're rushing assets to the to the scene and the first part of, of this whole thing is 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 the logistics uh, you know getting the equipment the necessary equipment from its location out to the wreck site where it has to be packaged loaded into an aircraft um, transported from the aircraft to a waiting ship in Newfoundland and then a 400 mile trip out to the to wreck site that in itself uh, is a is an extremely complicated uh, system of just moving the type of material uh, that they're moving the equipment and things uh, now from what we understand and what we're what we're seeing now the the Navy has some systems that they will probably employ out at the site and one of them is the uh, their fade off system their flyaway deep ocean salvage system and it is a, a massive reel it has a compensator that works uh, kind of like a shock absorber uh, because you got you got to imagine that the ship is is working on the sea and if you've got it attached the line attached to something you want to be able to absorb that shock without causing damage to the line now the line that they're putting on this they've got to be capable of going to 13,000 feet so the line that they're going to be using is, is I'm sure some kind of synthetic it's Dyneema or Kevlar uh, something that's that's small but very very strong but keep in mind it's, it's probably not uh, shape resistance which means they're probably going to have to employ some kind of sling system onto the submersible uh, to get it up now the submersible is synthetic it is skid loaded much like you a set of skids like you would uh, see on a helicopter and so that system is it's it's pulled up onto the ship and slid off the ship it doesn't have a crane that picks it up moves it over and sets it over like many of these other um, submersibles that uh, a lot of people have seen there's and so the lifting areas on it are probably very limited. Now what you'll probably see um, once these units are deployed these um, FADOS system in conjunction with an ROV now these remotely operated vehicles are they very uh, they're very capable units and they're able to do some very fine work um, I say fine. Um, the dexterity, the the motor movements are are very precise, and they'll be able to um, set this rigging system once this once the submersible is located to be able to uh, attach it, get it onto that uh, fade off system where it can be lifted to the surface. Now, our our little our little easement here, my, my makeshift easel. You know, you can't just, if we've got the submersible here at, say, say it's down at 8,000 feet. It's in a neutral buoyant state, and it's hanging out. Maybe, maybe it's encountered a fishnet or something that itself was, was neutrally buoyant, and they had a, a power failure uh, trying to get out of the net. They've lost the, the, the power's gone. They have no way of getting down. You can't. You can't bring a surface craft and just drop a line down here. Um, there's currents out here moving around. Once they locate the ship or the uh, 
the uh, submersible, the ship that comes in up here will deploy a line. This line's going to have a lot of sag in it in the current. You're talking about uh, something that's almost three miles down to the bottom. Uh, maneuvering this cable down into this area is, mm -hmm. is a bit of a trick, and that's, that's with experience and, and guidance of some very capable people that they have on scene. But you can understand the complexity of doing this. And while they have systems on board this ship that should keep it relatively stationary, there's no system to keep it from doing this other than the compensator that, uh, that is on the, the FADOS system. So you can expect that this cable, as it, as it gets down, the, the end of it, whatever the currents may be, it's, uh, it's not just stationary. It's not just going to be sitting in one place. Plus, if they have to maneuver the ship left or right, that's a procedure as well. It has to be done very slowly, very methodically, so you don't get this whipping motion on the cable that's being trailed off of the, uh, off the back of the system. Once it, they can get it down here and get it, get it slung, uh, the process of recovery uh, should should be pretty. It's it's been done before. The Navy has, has done some recovery on on some some deep deep water um, items, and they've they've been successful with it. It's it's elementary from there. I say elementary. They've done it before. They know what they're doing. Um, big concern of environmental concerns. Uh, not only is it uh, the oxygen depletion that's going on inside of that the submersible, but it's very cold. It's 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 probably just a few degrees above freezing uh, at, at depth. Um, if they have no power, that means no heat, uh, and that could become a real problem. Hypothermia could become a very uh, significant problem. Uh, so there are other environmental concerns inside of that, that submersible other than just the oxygen. Now, getting these, these systems up, once, once it's recovered, and they have uh, they have patients on board. Uh, you know, is are, are they able to get helicopters out there from maybe a ship to ship to be able to get them somewhere um, onto um, a ship that has uh, advanced uh, operational or uh, life saving uh, areas? A navy ship that has a, has a doctor on board. That's another concern. You know, I know that these, these, the, they've got the best in the world. The best minds are out there working on the problem. But there are so many, there are so many pieces of this uh, gear that have to go together for the systems to work properly and for everything to function. Timing is, is crucial. Uh, you know, the, uh, the, the oxygen is, is, is being depleted. And you don't know what the uh, what the other uh, temperature is doing to the occupants. Uh, the best thing right now, I guess, is, is certainly hope. Send send the power of, of hope uh, that they can they can find these these folks, uh, say some prayers, and that they can get them up and get them up uh, and uh, get them home. Now, the speed at which the units are deployed. You know, it's going to take to get to get down to depth. This cable. Uh, that's another fact. It's you can't. You're not just going to drop it and let it go. It's a systematic uh, deployment of the cable that takes time as well as the retrieval. So all that has to be factored in uh, to the to the operation. We certainly certainly hope the best for everyone that's that's in that in the situation. We'll pray for the guys that are out there actually doing uh, the, uh, the rescue, that they're able uh, to get them located and be able to get them back. And everything out there goes to safety. Uh, how bad is the weather going to be? Um, a, lot of, a, lot of different, a lot of different concerns. And um, just really hoping for the best of the situation. Just some thoughts on it that we were having today. Just wanted to share them with you guys. Um, thanks a lot for watching, and if you haven't done it yet, uh, hit the subscribe link. Give us a thumbs up. We'd love to hear some comments 
of what you guys think. And, you know, most of all, I want you guys to be safe out there. Thanks, guys.